Are we on the air? What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. So I know it's been a quick minute since uh, I posted anything, um, pretty much since we were in Glamis, but uh, been real busy since I got back home. Uh, that trip to Florida got me uh, behind at work, so I finally got caught up, and we're back in the shop today. We are going to work on this thing. We're going get to get this thing pretty much done today. Um, I had to order new 2-inch hollow spindles in order to get these spindle nuts. Um, it's it's just cheaper honestly to order the whole spindle just to get that nut to get on there so i can get all my suspension put together today i can get the shocks on and then we're going to try to get the uh, tie rods built today too as well so uh, these tie rods are a little sh my old ones are a little short so um, other than that guys everything else is done on this car it is ready to go so um we're going to get that front suspension to get the hubs on get the shocks in i do have the shocks already laid out here and pretty much ready to go all right so we got the uh new wheel bearings in got everything greased up uh got the hubs bolted on got the two inch hollow bolts on there so uh they were pretty close to being done we're gonna get the calipers on and then i'm gonna go cut the uh tie rods we'll get those made so we've got this side just about buttoned up i uh, got the shocks in uh, i'm waiting for some longer bolts to come in so that one's just mocked in there for now uh, i'm gonna go out into the fab room and uh, cut the tie rods and See if Joe can't get those welded up for us today. Get the tie rods in and get this thing steering. Get it back on its own wheels. All right, so uh, we're back in the shop. Joe's over here on the TIG table, welding up the uh, tie rods for me. And he said I owed him what? What's it called? Pound of hundreds. I owe him a pound of hundreds, as usual. Joe Fab to the rescue. 41,600. 41,600. <laughs> so anyways, guys, uh, while he's doing that, um, we got the shock, like I said, we got the shocks on this side. I'll go ahead and get the tie rod bolted up. And then we'll come back tomorrow and button the rest of this up. I've got to put the shocks on this side. He's going to bring the bolts home for me from Glamis for the bottom of the shocks. And then I got to put the floors back in tomorrow. And then this thing should be ready to roll up out of here. Um, we got the calipers on, the brake lines ran. I just need to tie wrap them in. And uh, this thing should be good to go. So I should be able to drive this thing out of here before the weekend's over. All right, guys, Joe got the tie rods built for us. Got them all welded up. I'm going to bolt them in here. I'm just going to hand tighten all this stuff for right now. And uh, get it all kind of mocked in here. So that's going to be a wrap for today. Over here at the shop, I'm going to go ahead and button it up. Um, I've got to get some bigger spacers to go in between here because the uh, tie rods are hitting the mounting bolts for my uh, rack and pinion. So uh, I've got to get that tightened back up as well. But... Anyhow, there's some spacers that go behind here, and we can make bigger ones, and that'll space it further back away from that bolt. So we don't have any rubbing issues there. Um, and that, guys, this thing's just about done. Another uh, full day of wrenching on this thing, and I should be able to get it on wheels and uh, get her out of here. So we'll be back tomorrow, and we'll check back in with you then. So we're back, and it's the next day. Uh, we're back in the shop, and we're going to go ahead and get this side put together. I just kind of stabbed a bolt in there just to hold the shock up for now. Um, I got to get the high miscellaneous spacers. High, high, I keep saying high miscellaneous. Someone caught me on that. High misalignment spacers. Because <laughs> we say high miss, but it's high misalignment spacers. I got to get those in there and lined up and then uh, get the bottom lined up. Joe's bringing the bolts home from Glamis for me for this weekend. So I'll have them on Monday to slam in here. I should be able to fill these up with nitrogen, get the wheels on. Um, as you saw in the last video, we got the tie rods done. I just need to get the high mess spacers for the tie rods, get the bolts in there, get this thing aligned, and uh, she'll be just about ready. We are doing the hood, so this is the old hood, and this is the hood we're going to put on the car. Maybe a little wider. We'll probably have to cut it down the middle and make it wider, but that's okay. And then we may have to get rid of these bars here, how it comes around. And we'll change them to the bars that go straight back. Very similar to what we're doing on this chassis here, where they go straight up. So we'll get that figured out. Um, 
Yeah, we may just cut it, cut it off here and then go straight back. So, all right, we'll see. I'll leave that up to Joe. He's the fab master on that stuff. So, um, you know, he's out in Glamis this weekend. So I've got some time to get this thing finished up and get it ready to get out of here. So you guys stick around while we uh, get the shocks in and get this thing finished up. So I've got my high misalignment spacers all set out here. We've got a bunch of different ones and different thicknesses. Um, so what we do is we take these and they're, they're gonna sit pretty much just like that. And as the shot goes in, and we'll get one on each side, it takes up all the gap in here. So it looks like two of this size will work perfectly for the front. So we're gonna go ahead and get that in there now. So I've got a spacer on this side and a spacer on that side, the bolts through, and that'll, uh, once we tighten this up, ooh, that, you know what? That actually looks a little small. So we're gonna add a thicker one on the uh, back side there. So we'll dig through our pile here and find a thicker one. So we got the upper shock bolted in with the right uh, high miss spacers. Uh, got the bolt in with the washers. And then uh, once you get them in with the high misses, you gotta come in here and make sure that that area is all gonna be clear. So you don't have any rubbing on the shocks when this thing cycles. So we should be good to go because it's dropped all the way out. So as this comes up, the shock's actually gonna move out a little bit. So we got plenty of clearance here. Everything looks good. Looks like this is gonna work out just perfect. At this point, I'm gonna come over to the other side. I'm gonna take the upper bolts out, uh, put the washers in, get it bolted down tight. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheels on so we can get the tie rods adjusted. At least get them close until Joe gets here because again, he's the king at that as well. I'll get the uh, brake lines all tie wrapped up. We'll get this thing back on wheels today and uh, should be pretty much done, guys. I take that back. The suspension will be pretty much done, but <laughs> we still got a lot more work to do on this thing. So for the meantime, now that we got everything bolted up, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the preload on these things. I'm gonna give it one inch of preload right here. And then uh, when we first get going, this thing's gonna be a little loud because these are gonna move. You can see it kind of gonna move back and forth. Um, what I did uh, on the back over here is I ordered these bushings from King and they go right inside the shock here and it keeps them from slamming when they move back and forth on the bypasses. When I first bought this car, it didn't have them and they made a lot of noise. Bypasses are already noisy as it is. They click a lot. Um, so having, uh, having those bushings in there really quiets them down quite a bit. All right, so I put the wheels on and I don't know if you guys can tell by the look on my face, but this thing is amazing. Holy crap, what a difference. Check this out. Dude, I cannot believe what it did to the front end of this car. Wow. Dude, it just, these little tires don't even look right on the car anymore. I, I'm gonna have to put my, I've got a set of 35s to go on these rims. But now I can probably get rid of these rims and put full size tires on the front, you know, for dirt tires. But holy crap, guys, this thing is gnarly now. I can't believe I held on to these arms for so many years and never put them on the car, but it was hard with me being in Cali and Joe being here and us going back and forth. But now that I'm in Arizona, you know, we can get this done. Dude, I mean, this thing's crazy looking. Wow. I can't believe how wide this thing is. I'm definitely going to have to either put these wheels on it to get it in my trailer or put a ratchet strap down below and ratchet strap it together. Because I don't think that's going to fit in my trailer anymore, but holy crap. See, this thing looks so good. I am so happy with how it came out. And it's going to perform. And look at that. Look how much wider the front is than the rear. <laughs> so, um, to make this a true monster cruiser, uh, we're going to have to change the rear arms. I am going to go to midboard hubs. Um, but I'm going to stay 930s in with a 2D. I'm not going to go a big tranny just because it's it's crazy expensive. And even with a 2D, if you put 934s in here, you're more likely to break the transmission than you are an axle or a CB. So um, I do have some plans for this motor. I'm either going to put nitrous or a turbo on it, one of the two. Probably turbocharge it eventually. Um, there's a few more other little odds and ends we're going to do. But I do have a set of 930 midboard hubs. Um, so basically what the difference is is this has a big nine inch long stub axle in it. 
um, kind of like VW style, but it's way bigger. And it comes all the way through to here and the CV bolts up right to that stub axle. And there's a bearing carrier, aluminum bearing carrier in the middle and um, a midboard hub looks like this. So that's a midboard hub. It's got a giant hub that goes on here and the CV actually sits inside the hub. Um, and it uses really big bearings. They don't go bad very often. Well, when they do, it's expensive, but um, if you just maintenance your car, if you have mid boards and a low horsepower car like I have, you should be able to drive it for years and years with no problems whatsoever. God, I still can't get over how freaking amazing that looks in the front, man. Look at that. So when I do the mid board hubs and the bigger arms, um, these arms, I believe, are five by five, and then we switch to five by seven. So it's how that works for you guys that don't know. Um, we base this off of a Volkswagen. It's, um, and most all cars were based off of, you know, that type of tranny and that rear engine car and Volkswagen. So five by five means this arm from a factory Volkswagen location is pushed back, the center of the tire is pushed back five inches and then it's five inches wider. So this is a five by five arm. I need to go five by seven to make up for the two inches we lost by widening the front. So it'll even the car back out. So I've also got a few other things coming for this car. Um, I'm gonna go through the season probably with these rear arms um, before we switch them. I think once I go to do the rear arms, I'm gonna strip the whole car down and powder coat it and paint it, but I'll get through the season first. Um, I'm gonna make this a true monster cruiser. This is just a San Limo cruiser. It was a single shot car in the front with bypasses in the rear. Um, now it has monster arms bypasses with the new style shock mounts. Um, we've already done some chassis stiffening underneath the back seat. We X-braced it all the way across when we back halved the back of the car and updated it. There's just a couple more things. I'm gonna add a support bar that goes from here up and then a V-bar that goes from here down. And then the other thing I have coming for this car is four of those. They're not going to say gear one. They'll say San Limo or San Limo Racing, kind of like that. Oh, here we go. Here's a set right here. So very similar to these, um, but I did the, uh, you know, I did that with purple and black. So I got four new seats coming for this car. We're going to put four buckets in it. We'll get rid of these. We'll put buckets in the rear because it's safer. Now that my daughter's big, she's damn near taller than I am, um, it's, it'll be a lot safer for her to be in her own seat and any other passengers as well. So we'll get rid of these. I'm gonna build a firewall and then we're gonna add a sway bar to this car also when we do the near rear arms. So lot, lots to come in the future for this car, but we're, uh, we're gonna get through this season the way it is now. And uh, we may just do the hood and then finish that up. But I'm rambling on here. We're gonna get back to work. I gotta get the uh, pedals and floors bolted down. So guys, that's just about gonna wrap it up for my car today. Um, not much more I can do uh, without Joe here. Uh, he's going to bring me the bolts. We have them in Glamis for the lower shocks, like I said earlier. Uh, I've got my brake lines all tie wrapped up. Um, and I need the high misalignment spacers for the uh, tie rod ends. And we've got those out at Glamis as well. So he's going to bring those back for me. And then uh, it's just a few little touches aligning this thing and getting it uh, done. I got the floors back in. I got a few pieces of aluminum to put back in underneath there. But other than that, guys, this thing's ready to go. So... Uh, you know what I think I'm gonna do? This hood I think is just sitting here. It is. I'm gonna sit this over there and see what it looks like. Hang on. So by sitting it just on top of my hood, you can see we wouldn't have to widen it very much. These notches are cut out for the cage here. So what we would do is uh, take my hood off, get a hood and we just cut it right down the middle probably and just let the right and left sides fit. But uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and order this hood. I'm gonna have Joe ho order me one on Monday when he gets back. It's gonna look so much cooler with this hood versus this thing. And these knockouts for the shock mount are so much more subtle. So it'll look, should look really just like this does. That's gonna look cool. And then maybe I can change the front bumper to a T-style like this because these look cool with the uh, little aluminum inserts in them. So, lots of options. So, I definitely would like to update the front end of this car and make it look 
like the GP105 or the new cruiser style, and then leave the whale tail on the back. So I've got the best of both worlds. I've got the newer front end with the older rear end, which is really cool. Well, it's not that old. This has been updated, so this is only a few years old. So, all right, guys, like I said, that's going to do it for my car today. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you give us a like and a subscribe, and we will see you guys out in the dunes.